So good morning, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Kieran Hicks. Uh, I'm a lecturer at University of Lincoln, and I'm presenting some of my PhD work today, which is with my colleagues at Lincoln and at KU Leuven. Um, and so yeah, basically, I'm going to be talking about juicy games design today, and in particular, the visual aspects of juicy design, and so visual embellishments. Uh, and so, before I skip, so first of all, I just wanted to quickly sum up what we mean when I say visual embellishments. Uh, and so they're essentially design elements that don't have any contribution to system functionality, so they're kind of uh, superfluous to function. Um, and so what they tend to do is they convey information that's already there, um, or non-meaningful information, so it's not information critical to the task at hand. Um, and so some previous research and kind of um, more standard HCI literature kind of shows that visual embellishments have a effect on experience so they can improve the user experience. Um, and so in the context of games, there's a similar kind of thing that we use called juiciness. Uh, and so this is kind of a game design term um, that's used to describe a type of kind of positive game feel where there's lots of audiovisual feedback. Um, you know, one single action has lots of different elements of feedback on both the audio and visual channels and occasionally on the haptic feedback as well. Um, and so some research has begun kind of exploring this. Um, and so there's, there's some that kind of finds that juiciness actually has a positive effect on player experience, but can also have no effect sometimes. And so the purpose of kind of this, uh, the two studies I'm presenting today, is to kind of cement where, you know, what effect it can actually have on the player experience. Um, and so quick gif of Candy Crush, um, because it's a really good example of kind of juicy games design. So, you know, it, it's core, cool. it's a really simple match-free game, but you know, if, if we look, we see lots of different visual elements, and there's a lot of different audio feedback elements going on as well when they do well. So, you know, when they match free and it combos, the, like, announcer of the game goes, oh, tasty. Uh, and so, you know, that all conveys extra information that just makes that, that action feel a bit more rewarding. And I think that's a good summary of kind of what juiciness is. Um, and so we kind of approach this as from the concept that visual embellishments are quite a core part of juicy games design. Um, and so like, while audio is as well and haptic feedback, we kind of chose just to focus on visual embellishments first so we could clearly kind of state what effect they have. Um, and so yeah, to gain you know, a, a deeper understanding of the impact that kind of visual embellishments can have on player experience, we carried out two different user studies. Uh, and so we carry out these with both research games that are made you know, for this purpose and then an existing commercial game. Uh, hypothesis is essentially you know, juiciness into a game, hopefully a smiley face. Um, and so the two research questions we kind of went into this with was, you know, does, does juiciness, when implemented as, you know, visual embellishments, improve player experience, uh, and does it improve player performance? Um, and so the first study that we did um, was using two different research games made for purpose. Uh, we had 40 participants, uh, and so we created two different games. Uh, first game was called Cuba, which is a kind of frogger, clone, where basically you, know, you have to get a cube across a series of hazards. Uh, and then the second game is Dungeon Descent, which is kind of an action RPG dungeon crawler. And so we kind of picked two quite different genres of games, with one being more kind of like classic arcade casual game, and the other one being a more mechanically complex experience. So we had a, you know, a, a good measure of how, it, how juiciness affects both of those types of genres. Um, and so each of those games had two different versions made a juicy version that has these extra kind of juicy elements, um, or visual embellishments, not just uh, juicy, uh, and then base versions, which still had feedback, both audio and visual, um, but it had the kind of the, the standard we'd expect to see in a game. Um, and so there's no extra levels of feedback. And to kind of validate that, we had some games designers actually play the games and confirm that you know, the juicy versions were juicy and that the base versions were still good games and still had the appropriate amount of feedback but weren't considered juicy. Uh, so hopefully a quick video is now going to play, fingers crossed, yep, so this is Dungeon Descent, so this is the, the action uh, kind of RPG crawler, and so this is the juicy version I'm sharing now, and you can see there's just kind of lots of extra visual elements going on the screen, um, and so basically participants would play that uh, for five to ten minutes, uh, depending on how long they wanted to play, um, so they had to play for at least five, but they could actually play for a bit longer, uh, and so participants were exposed to both versions of the games, and then both games as well in this study. So they end up playing four different conditions. Um, this is the Cuba game, so it's exactly a clone of Frogger, just with a kind of isometric angle. Uh, again, this is the juicy version, 
Um, and so in this version, you know, the cube rolls around. There's some screen shake when uh, the cube moves. Um, it has like a more elaborate def effect, where in the base version, none of that's present. Um, so to measure this, we used a bunch of different questionnaires. Uh, so we used for looking at player experience. Uh, and so we were kind of interested in um, the factors of self-determination theory, so meaning competence, relatedness, and autonomy. Um, and so we used the player experience and new satisfaction questionnaire and the player experience inventory for this. Um, as we were looking at you know, visual uh, aesthetic and visual appeal, we looked at a questionnaire that actually measured the aesthetic appeal of a, of an, uh, a thing, essentially, through the Attract Diff 2 questionnaire. Um, and then we also had some open-ended questions um, at the end of it where they could give feedback on each individual game, uh, as well as storing some player metrics as well. Um, and so for the first research question, you know, does um, juiciness as visual embellishments improve player experience? It kind of does. Um, not in the kind of way we necessarily expected. So in terms of visual appeal uh, and some of the constructs that are related to that, so like immersion and curiosity and meaning, uh, there was a significant effect, uh, an, an increased effect at that uh, in the juicy versions of those games. Um, but when it comes to the factors of kind of self-determination theory, like competence, there was no difference at all. So in the context of research games, juiciness, from what we studied, doesn't actually increase competence. Um, and then for player performance, uh, there was no difference at all uh, in any of the conditions. Uh, players both perceived that they did as well on all the different conditions, and the player metrics also backed up that they felt they did the same across the board. Uh, so there was no difference at all. Uh, so after doing that study, we kind of wanted to then explore if you know, those findings actually held true in a commercial game setting. Um, and so to do that, we used the game Quake Free Arena. Uh, and so we had 32 participants for this study. Um, and so we kind of picked Quake because it's been used in research before. Um, it's a commercially successful game. Um, it's still actively played today. It has quite a, a rapid player base that's still playing games online. Um, and it also has a massive amount of flexibility that allowed us to turn on and off different kind of visual effects to make a juicy and a non uh, and, and a base version. Uh, and so yeah, we did exactly that, I think, yeah. So we adapted Quake into two different versions, a juicy version and a base version. Um, the base version had the kind of uh, simple items for people that have played Quake, is where the items just displayed as like an icon. Uh, in the juicy version, there were nice 3D models that kind of bounced around and had an animation. Um, in the juicy version, there was kind of more smoke effect and like the rocket launches, you know, when you got a kill, they'd explode into bits and gore. So it was a lot more visceral in nature in the juicy version. Um, and then, yeah, the base version just didn't have most of those effects. It still had the standard feedback elements that were expected. Um, and so we used the exact same measures for this study. Uh, so, you know, the pens, the pixie, and the attract diff two. Um, again, in combination with player metrics. Uh, and so what we found was actually slightly different to the research games. Uh, and so, you know, juiciness does have an effect on the player experience overall. So we found the same effect in terms of like visual appeal and, oh, thanks, uh, and the curiosity and the mean and the immersion. Um, but additionally, we found that it did have an effect on the self-determination theory constructs. Uh, and so the players kind of, you know, they reported that in the juicy version of Quake 3, they felt more competent, um, which is different than the research games where we didn't find any increase in competency. Um, and then for player performance, there was no player performance difference uh, in terms of player metrics and how well they actually did, but players actually perceived that they did do better in the juicy version. So while their, you know, their, their kill counts were exactly the same and their kind of accuracy was the same, um, they, they perceived that they did better in the juicy version probably because of those extra feedback elements. Um, but yeah, there was, there was no difference in actual performance. Uh, so I've got just a little quick quote here. Um, so the, the juicy version felt like a well-rounded game in all of its glory, uh, where the base version felt like something was missing and incomplete. Uh, and I think that actually sums up what juiciness really is, in that it helps make that kind of polished aesthetic and makes a game feel like a complete whole. Um, so what we can kind of say coming out of this is that visual embellishments definitely do improve the player experience, although that how they improve that player experience is dependent on how they're actually implemented. So in Quake 3, you know, it was designed by game design experts, and there was probably a lot of consideration that went into how we designed those particle effects um, and, you know, and the different feedback elements that were there. And so that might be, you know, they were designed to make players feel competent, and that's why we saw when those elements were turned on, players did feel more competent. 
Um, but regardless of kind of implementation and design of the juicy elements, like, you know, however we included them, they still did always increase the visual appeal of a game and the kind of curiosity and meaning and immersion that a player would feel. Uh, and so really quickly, because I don't got much time, kind of the takeaway messages is so juiciness can actually be a really valid design strategy for making worlds that players want to explore, for, you know, making that feeling of curio curiosity and meaning and immersion, uh, which should help increase engagement. Um, however, you know, there needs to be careful selection of juicy elements um, based on which aspect of player experience you're trying to improve. And likewise, you don't want to overwhelm the player with too many visual effects at once. Um, and so, yeah, basically, our findings suggest that juiciness is an important contributor to the overall aesthetic kind of feel of a game. Excellent. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. So we have now, is there some questions? Yeah. We have Yes, and please uh, um, start with your name. And I will. Yeah. Daniel Johnson, Queensland University of Technology. Thanks, Karen. Um, partly constructed research. Um, and this may be in the paper, so sorry if I'm, or maybe you'll appreciate Yeah, I definitely it. missed out things that are in the paper, <laughs> so I recommend checking it's it. 10 minutes. <laughs> um, some of the work on this sort of thing um, ties this to rewards. So you can think of this sort of feedback as a lens for rewards. And I wondered if, are the reward, are the, is the feedback in the games you made maybe less tied to other kinds of rewards than in Quake? Because in Quake, it's like you've got a more powerful gun. And do you think that might explain some yeah. of the findings? Yeah, so I think definitely the, actually, you know, the, the mechanics and how those feedback elements are tied to rewards in Quake, I think, comes across more clearly. Yeah. Um, and I think, so I didn't actually touch on that much. I think the, one of the reasons to do with the, the increased confidence we found in Quake is to do with that more visceral nature of the gameplay, where you know, when you do kill an enemy, and rather than just seeing them fall over, they explode into bits, that, that makes you feel good, right? And it's also yeah. more rewarding to see that kind of visual flurry. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, right. Yeah. I also wanted to commend you on your choice of scales. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hi, uh, Josh Miller, Northeastern University in uh, the U.S. Um, you said that visual embellishments are uh, non-functional to the game, um, but this is visual and audio feedback, and adding that visual and audio feedback might make it easier to perceive from a sensory perspective. So do you actually see this juiciness as non-functional? So the, the literature kind of summed up juiciness as kind of superfluous game elements. Um, and so I kind of half agree with that in that the, a game should be functional without the juicy elements, right? The, the juiciness isn't the concept of having audio and visual feedback. That should be present regardless. But I think it's that next step of having multiple levels of audio and visual feedback where juiciness kind of comes into its own. Um, but yeah, I kind of half agree that it, it is necessary. Like it's part of the core experience, and it's not. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Hi, Regan Magic, University of Saskatchewan. Great talk, thanks, Karen. Thanks. Um, my question is actually about the differences between study one and study two. You kind of pitched it as a difference in kind of the underlying game and the game mechanics, but there was also probably a pretty big difference in the juiciness of the juice. I don't know how you would kind of characterize <laughs> the Juiciness it. of the juice. But like when you showed your, your Frogger clone, you talked about the juiciness of like the screen shake or whatever, and that's yep. very different than what you were explaining in the, in the Quake situation. So do you think it's the underlying game that caused those differences, or do you actually think it's the juiciness of the juice? Yes, that's actually a fantastic question. Thank you. Um, so I think so in the Quake one, there is also kind of screen shake as well. There's a lot of very similar elements that have you know, jumped right over, but there is, you know, that the, the ones I explained were the more visceral ones. I think that's, that's what explains that difference. Um, but I'm not, you know, further work's needed, essentially, right? Um, and maybe, yeah, breaking down juicy elements and testing them is the next kind of step. Because, um, yeah, they're not all equal, as you said. Sorry, one, one more quick question. Uh, great talk. Oh. Thank you, Ansgar Deping, Electronic Arts. Uh, so your takeaway is, is kind of, it's complicated, uh, which is great for uh, if you want to make this applied. So if you had to, what, what are the three design lessons you take away from this? Uh, so biggest one is obviously the consideration of what 
aspect of player experience you're trying to improve, right? If you're just after, you know, kind of increased visual appeal, then kind of the way you implement juicy effects can kind of be just chucked in, right? Just add screen shake, just add some more particle effects. But if you're after those more particular facets of player experience, then you need to really carefully design those. Um, two would be that it's definitely worth, like, so, you know, the, the base versions, what, you know, always rated lower in most of those kind of visual appeal and curiosity and immersion and meaning like in the, in the base version. So the juicy versions, you know, and increase that. So I'd say one of the design lessons would be is to always add some juiciness, right? Um, like add some visual like embellishments to research games as well, because it shows it makes it a better player experience. Uh, I can't think of a third one off the top of my head. I apologize. All right, thanks. <laughs> Thank you again.